Determine if the infinite series converges absolutely, converges conditionally, or diverges. Notice here we have an alternating series. So we'll first apply the alternating series test to determine if the series converges or diverges. Then, if it does converge, we'll determine if it converges conditionally or absolutely. So if we have an alternating series in this form here, where a sub n is greater than zero, the series converges if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals zero and a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. So if it does converge, we'll test for conditional or absolute convergence by determining if the summation of the absolute value of a sub n converges or diverges. If it converges, then the alternating series is absolutely convergent, and if it diverges, the alternating series is conditionally convergent. So notice that a sub n, the non-alternating part, would be natural log n cubed divided by the quantity n plus eight. We can apply the power property here if we want and write this as a product. We'd have three times natural log n divided by the quantity n plus eight. Notice how starting at n equals two, all these terms would be positive. And now we'll determine the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is again three natural log n divided by the quantity n plus eight. This is an indeterminate form though. This is approaching infinity over infinity. So we'll apply L'Hopital's rule to help us determine this limit. So we'll take the derivative of the numerator and denominator and then determine the limit. Well, the derivative of three natural log n with respect to n would be three times one over n, or three divided by n, and the derivative of n plus eight would be one. Notice three divided by n approaches zero as n approaches infinity. The denominator stays at one, and therefore this limit is equal to zero. And now we want to show that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n, meaning the terms are not increasing. And we'll do this using the calculator this time. Let's go ahead and leave it in function mode. We'll press y equals, enter a sub n, which is three, in this case natural log x instead of natural log n, and then divided by the quantity x plus eight. Just remember x is the same as n. And now we'll go to the table of values by pressing second graph. Let's scroll back up to x equals two, which represents n equals two. Notice how the terms are actually increasing at first, but as we scroll down, notice after x equals eight or n equals eight, the terms do start to decrease or get smaller, and therefore a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n as long as n is greater than or equal to eight. So as long as we make a note here and say when n is greater than or equal to eight, all these conditions hold true, and our series does converge by the alternating series tests. Now we're not done. We still have to test for absolute or conditional convergence. But let's go ahead and make a note of our progress so far. By the alternating series test, the series does converge. And now to test for conditional or absolute convergence, we need to determine if the summation of the absolute value of a sub n converges or diverges. Let's do that on the next slide. So we want to determine if the summation from n equals two to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n, which would be natural log n to the third, divided by the quantity n plus eight, converges or diverges. If this converges, then we have absolute convergence. If it diverges, we have conditional convergence. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as the summation from n equals two to infinity of three natural log n divided by the quantity n plus eight. Let's do another comparison test, and let's compare this to a known diverging series where we have the summation from n equals one to infinity, or let's make this two, of one divided by n, which we should recognize as a divergent series by the p-series test with p equals one. So if we apply the direct comparison test, if we can show the terms of this series are greater than or equal to the terms of this series, then by the direct comparison test, this series would also diverge. 
So again, for a quick review, for the direct comparison test, if we're given the summation of a sub n and the summation of b sub n, where the terms b sub n are greater than or equal to the terms of a sub n, since we're trying to show divergence, if the summation of a sub n diverges, then the summation of b sub n diverges, which means to show divergence, since we know this series diverges, we want to show that b sub n is greater than or equal to a sub n, at least starting at a certain value of n. So in this case, we're letting a sub n be equal to one divided by n, and b sub n would be equal to three natural log n divided by the quantity n plus eight. So we want to show, and since this series diverges, we want to show that b sub n is greater than or equal to a sub n, which means three natural log n divided by n plus eight needs to be greater than or equal to one divided by n, at least starting at some value of n. Let's make this comparison on the calculator. Let's press y equals and enter, and for y two, we'll enter one over x, which represents one over n. And now we'll press second graph to go back to the table. Let's scroll back up to two. So again, we're trying to show that y sub one, or b sub n, is greater than or equal to y sub two, or a sub n. But notice that first, y sub one is actually less than y sub two, which is okay as long as that changes. Notice starting at n equals four, y sub one, or in this case b sub n, is greater than a sub n. So this is true as long as n is greater than or equal to four. And because we made this comparison to a known diverging series, we now know that the summation from n equals two to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n diverges by the direct comparison test. So the conclusion is the original alternating series is conditionally convergent. If the summation of the absolute value of a sub n happened to converge, then the given series would be absolutely convergent, but in this case it was divergent, and therefore we have conditional convergence. I hope you found this helpful.